My parents had to discipline themselves to tread the narrow line between protecting me from harm and being overprotective. By the time he was two and a half, he knew every inch of Woodland Street where we lived. He could sell every house by the windowsill or door knocker. I got him to play with his toys on the front doorstep to get the other children to mix with him. Then we got a letter from the Royal National Institute for the Blind saying... Graham has to take an IQ test so important decisions can be made about his education. His IQ was very high. So they said we should send him to the Sunshine Home for the Blind. In Northwood Middlesex. He's only four. You're not equipped to teach what things a blind person needs to know. Anyway, he'll be home at the weekend. Harry! I just don't want him go away! Mum and Dad were very upset. Very upset. Sort of really on fours all the time. Is he alright and would you look after him properly? Keep him clean? I used to look forward to the weekend. I'd come straight home and put my favourite records on. Once he got home, everyone was waiting, waiting for him to come in. <laughs> and he danced with Judy. If I did it, he'd pull my hair. Judy. <laughs> much different to sighty kids, though there were little things, like... They never ran into lampposts. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was real to me until I touched it. His toys gave him some idea of what things looked like. I had loads of soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> and I could usually find something different about each of them. How they were standing. The shape of their gun, or their uniform. <laughs> but the Arab soldiers were a bit misleading. They wore thick robes and left me with the impression that all Arabs are extremely fat. Boy! <laughs> yeah, stuff looking stuff. I don't know what. You couldn't have known what the hell they look like. His mum and dad bought my bike. First, a free we love. <laughs> Then, when his knees were knocking on the top of it, we bought him a two-wheeler. He went up and down the street and then went up the curb. One day, I ran someone over. What the bloody hell do you think you're doing? I'm blind. You should get out of my way. I was so bloody shocked, I phoned the newspaper. And they came down and took some pictures. Of me. I can only remember this one time when a sighted kid took advantage of Graham's blindness. Oi, come here, feel this. He had this piece of wood, and as I touched it, he placed his hand over mine and pushed it down. <laughs> to a nail sticking up out of it. The boy's mother was furious! It's not only children who have the propensity for cruelty. Much later on, a man bought some second-hand hi-fi equipment from Graham. Real top-of-the-range audiophile stuff. He paid in tens, but told Graham it was twenties. Often, Graham would turn his blindness to his advantage. Many a times, unbeknown to us, when we thought he was asleep, he was reading his bloody whale, whale reading, reading books <laughs> underneath his sheets. <laughs> Thank you.